right, so a little disclaimer. I have a notepad. It's right here. And I'm going to be reading off of it a little bit. I have key points that I want to touch in the video. And I tend to get very sidetracked, especially when I'm talking about God. So if you see me looking over to the side or maybe looking down, that's what I'm looking at, okay? So um, I just want to start this video by saying that there's no easy way to walk with God. It's going to be hard and you're going to go through struggles and hardships. You're also going to lose a lot of people choosing to follow God, which um, just to touch on that a little bit, it's very, very important because me personally, I've been walking with God for years, but I was very lukewarm in the beginning and I wasn't really receptive to what he was trying to tell me. And a lot of that was centered around my relationships. And I'm here to tell you right now that there are relationships in your life that are going to hinder you from being able to accurately hear God and hear what he's trying to tell you. And sometimes the very thing he's trying to tell you is to get those people out of your life. And it's not coming from a place of judgment. It doesn't mean that you have to love them any less. But certain people can't move to the next level with you. Certain people can only become a hindrance to you. And it's very important that you be able to notice when somebody's been a hindrance in your life and when they've been helping you if they're not pushing you towards god they're usually a hindrance if they're pushing you towards let's say going to parties or they're pushing you towards drinking and doing drugs they're usually a hindrance from what he has called you to do so it's gonna be hard because like i said i was in a seven to eight year relationship and I had to let that go. I had to cut that relationship off and that broke my heart and caused me a lot of pain and it was really hard. It took me years just to come to the realization that I would no longer be with that person, you know, so it's not something that's easy. Walking with him isn't anything that's going to be easy, but I know that through the relationships that I lost, I gained a greater relationship that surpassed all the relationships that I lost. And that was a relationship with God because nobody loves you like he does. Nobody's there for you like he is. And the way that he lifted me up throughout this whole process of me transitioning from out of this relationship, I know that there is no love like it. So it's worth it in the end. You're going to feel sad. You're going to be angry about it. You're going to be hurt about it. Especially if you put in as much time as I did. It's going to be something that cuts deep. But he will repair your heart and give you greater. And even if he doesn't give you greater, you will get the greatness in him. He'll be the one that you look to for everything. And that is better than any relationship that I've lost promise I'll also say please ignore my cat she's being bad but today I'll more so be speaking with you about hearing God's voice and how to tell the difference between God's face voice and the voice of the enemy I struggle with knowing the difference between the two um just another disclaimer I grew up in the church and I think it's a common misconception that because you grew up in the church you really know your Bible you really know God's voice you really know what he's telling you and that just wasn't that wasn't the truth with me I would hear the sermons I would feel him in the room i would feel him through the worship songs but i didn't know what he was trying to tell me i didn't have that personal relationship with him and it wasn't until i left and moved to a different state from my family church and i started really exploring that on my own and going to a church i wasn't familiar with that i started to really understand god and really hear his voice more and it's not to say that your family church or the church that you grew up in is God's not in the room. Because nine times out of ten, he's in every room that we pray for him to be in. But the relationship, you have to understand, it's not a religious thing when it comes to having a relationship with God. It's relational. He 
wants the relationship more than he wants anything. He cherishes the relationship more than he cherishes you going to church. Not to say that it's not important because it definitely is. But he would rather you build a relationship with him than sing on a choir. He would rather you build a relationship with him than to sit in a pew every Sunday and not understand what's going on. And in order to do that, I really feel like it's very important for you to read your Bible. Your Bible will open up your ears to his voice in so many ways. But um, just to stay on task because I will get sidetracked. Like I said, I didn't have anybody to break down what the enemy's voice looks like and what God's voice looked like. So I was very confused and I struggled with a lot of things. Um, a lot of thoughts that weren't of God that I thought maybe was God and it turned me away from him ultimately. So I am kind of making this video to give plain terms on what is God's face, voice and what is the enemy's voice because it's so important. So um, my first point is the devil confuses your thoughts. Um, just stating that God is not an author of confusion. Um, just to give you Bible verses around that, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33 states, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Psalm 71, 1 through 16, Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Um, I say that just to say the devil uses confusion as a weapon to manipulate and assault people's minds. You know, he can make us doubt those around us and the truth to the point where the lies he tells us becomes our new truth. You've ever been in a room and something in your head just tells you that this particular um, group or this particular person it just doesn't like you for some reason and then they start having conversations with the other people that are around you and you just think oh they're talking about me so you've built up this hard shell towards them even when they're being nice to you so you've gone out of your way to make things uncomfortable for them even when they're not showing you what you thought when you gossip with other people about them or you entertain negative conversations about them based off of the preference that you thought they were talking to you those thoughts are not of god they stir up confusion in your head about the people that are around you and realistically you weren't sure you can't read their thoughts so you're not even sure that that's what happened you just know that something happened. You just know that you felt something. And you don't even know where that feeling is coming from. So, I just, I think the enemy has come to steal our time. So, sometimes he'll plant the spirit of confusion to push us further and further from our destiny. God doesn't like, you know, us being rude or mean to people he doesn't like when we gossip he doesn't like those things and sometimes he'll halt our destiny until we get our heart right because god he hears our thoughts and he knows our heart and then deep deep down in your heart you have a certain feeling towards somebody but you're not even sure why that's the spirit of confusion working in your heart and you have to get rid of that spirit because again we don't we don't fight the flesh. There's a spirit telling you these things. There's a spirit of confusion that's telling you these things that's making you feel this way. And you have to make sure that you check that. But you won't be able to check it until you recognize it. So that's why it's always so important to just think, is this how I feel? Or something making me feel this way. Like for me personally, I've always been an overthinker. And um, even now sometimes I have to really, really get into deep prayer about it. Because I would overthink everything. I had a contingency plan for a contingency plan for a contingency plan. I was crazy with it. And ultimately I had to get rid of excuse me ultimately i had to get rid of that thinking because of the fact that 
God has a plan for me. Me making all these plans that ultimately all fail just re reverts me back to his plan. But when I try to make my own plan independent of him, it lets him know that I don't trust him. That I don't trust what he's doing in my life and what he has planned for me. And that's the only plan that I should be focused on. So just a tip, if you're like me and you overthink, sometimes I wake up and immediately my mind is racing on what needs to be done today, what needs to be done tomorrow, what needs to be done for the week, for the month, for the year, what goals and plans I have, what I'm trying to do. And sometimes I have to wake up and I have to get on my knees and I have to say, God, I want your will and I want your way. I don't want my will. I don't want my way. And I have to repeat it every time that I feel like I'm starting to make a plan because I don't think that he's going to come through, which is also the spirit of confusion. That's why it all ties in together. When I start to not trust his plan and not trust the way that he's doing things, I have to sit myself down and have a prayer about it because it comes from someplace. These aren't just my thoughts. Something is causing me to think like this. And it's so important that you check that at the door so that you can slowly but surely, as you're walking with him, he'll start to change your heart. But he also says faith without works is dead. So you have to tell your mind to stop. You have to tell, you have to hold those thoughts captive and he will get rid of them for you. It's not an immediate fix. He doesn't do anything immediately because he works with you because we're humans. We constantly do things every day that he has to forgive us for and he does. And then he takes us and he changes us little by little. Every, every testimony you hear, they change little by little. Every, every trial that you've been to, it changes you little by little. It's so important. It's so important. But just to get back on track again because <laughs> you know me. Um, the devil will plant thoughts in your head such as, what if this happens? Or why isn't my time coming sooner? In order to make you doubt what God has promised you and destroy your faith. Just like I said... I would make contingency plans after contingency plans after contingency plans because I did not trust that God had a way for me. And I feel like a lot of us do that. We, we think that it's not moving fast enough. I see all these people around me and they're doing this and they're doing that, but I'm still stagnant. I'm still stuck in this place. And, you know, that's my mindset sometimes, too, which is no judgment over here because I've all I've often thought like that. But now I'm starting to look at things a little bit differently. Now, when I have those thoughts, I think there must be something that God's still trying to show me in this season of my life. There must be something that he still wants me to hear or he still wants me to go through or he still wants me to learn. And that's why I haven't moved to the next season of my life. It's very easy to look at somebody else's life and think, wow, I should be there. But you really don't know what they did to get there. And sometimes God is not in what you see other people have. He's not in the midst of that. And I promise you, waiting is better than getting it a different way. Just clock that to you. Waiting is better than getting it a different way. So, and I've learned that the hard way. I've lost things that has affected me in the long run because I couldn't wait. I'm still building myself up from mistakes that I've made because I was so impatient. I didn't want to wait on God's timing. You know, so it's very important to just take a step back and reevaluate yourself in your life because the what ifs is it's not of God. The why am I not is not of God because he calls you to be everything that you're supposed to be. So if you're not something right now, maybe 
you might need to reflect on what you're doing and how you can do what you're doing differently. Maybe you need to get on your knees and pray to him and see, well, why is it that this is happening this way and that is happening that way? There's a reason behind everything that he does. And he's not going to give you anything that you're not prepared for. And that's what I've learned is a lot of times I rush things. And then when I'm in the midst of it, I'm like, wow, I'm not ready for this. Wow, this is too much for me. Wow, this is hurting me. Wow, this is this is destroying me inside. Wow, it's affecting my character, you know, and like, wow, this is changing me. Why? Because I didn't get it through God. I got it through my own means, meaning I wasn't trusting him to provide for me. And because I didn't trust him, I got so much slack on the back end because of it. I changed as a person because of it. I lost friendships because of it. I lost myself because of it, you know? So it's very important to look at things like that. And that's why it's so important to differentiate God's voice from the enemy's because God will always approach you in love and that's super important even when he's disciplining us there have been times let me tell you I'm telling you there have been times where I feel like God has had to sit me down I mean, there was a period where I, I lost my job. I couldn't find another job. I was go, go, go. And he had to sit me down because I lost focus on what was important, which was him. The person who was providing all this for me in the first place. The person who was pulling me through all the struggles in the first place. I lost my focus and he had to sit me down. And when he sat me down, he did it with so much grace and so much love that I couldn't even be mad. I couldn't even be mad. I just, I had to open up my Bible and continue to pray and continue to read and continue to watch my sermons and continue to go to church because I knew that there was something greater happening for me. And there was. You know, because he doesn't give you a promise and then renege on it. He's not that God. He don't lie. He doesn't lie to you at all. What he says he's going to do, he does every single time. Maybe it's not on your timing, but it's, it's, it's worth it. When you look back on your life and you're like, wow. Wow. Look what I have now versus what I had Look what I would have had had I waited. Look what I would have had sooner had I waited. I've said that a lot of times. I could have been had this. I look around, I'm like, I could have been had this. But I was too stuck in my own head, listening to my own thoughts, listening to the lies that I told myself, the lies that came from the enemy instead of listening to God's voice. It's so important, y'all. You know, he is patient. He does not rush us. He doesn't want you to rush yourselves. He says everything that you'll get is in due time. You don't have to rush it. But you know who does rush us? The enemy. He'll say, look what they got. Don't you want that? Look at how fast they got that. You don't want that? Look at where you're at in life. And look at where they're at. He, he, he's the voice of comparison. He'll compare everything that you do to the next person to make you feel less than, to make you feel inadequate. But God doesn't do that. He doesn't rush you. He says in due time, you'll get everything that's... Okay, you guys. So my video was reaching like 21 minutes and I just wanted to make sure that I keep my videos under a certain length for those of us who do have... a attention deficit issues i understand because i also have it so um i'm most likely just going to do a part two on how to hear god's voice and differentiate between the enemy's voice and god's voice um just like comment and subscribe and let me know if you guys want a part two to this video and i have that up for you guys so thank you for listening 
I hope that you got clarity out of this. If not, I'll be making a part two that'll dive into it a little bit more in depth. But I love the support and I appreciate it. God bless you all.